All right. Hi, everybody, to this Saturday session of uh, Language of Ramses. Welcome. And uh, yeah, thanks so much again for the, the many submissions of the homework. Everybody did great. Um, there were a few points where I saw that one or two people were struggling, uh, different people with different points. So I highlighted key features in blue that we can talk about. And I would just say, let's do the usual thing. Let's go through uh, the two sets of exercises, um, the one from the strike papyrus and the three sentences for extra practice on the stative. And let's say maybe, let's have one person take one line. I broke it out a little bit and I'll do the transcription and a bit of the commentary. So for the strike papyrus, um, few words up front. Uh, this is absolutely fascinating. It's one big papyrus, which is in the museum, um, the Egyptian Museum in Turin, uh, Torino. And uh, they do a fantastic thing. Let me show you this real quick. I hope I have it open. So if you go to the museum, uh, the Museo Egizio, uh, they have um, a uh, papyrus collection and you can register. And if you register in there, you basically get all the backup documents. And now, unfortunately, I don't have the search open for 1880, which is the papyrus we're dealing with. I'm not sure what happens if I click a random one. Let's try it real quick. Um, although this isn't, these are all fragments. That's not too exciting. I'll just choose this one at random. Let's see what happens. I hope it's a good one. And the reason I don't want to search for it is as good as the website is, the search takes forever. So we're going to sit here for a minute watching that uh, that bubbly thing. Unfortunately, it also seems to happen now that I just click on a on a document. Here we go. So what they normally have is they have good photos of the document that you can also enlarge and take a look at. So to the topic, Chris, of, of uh, handwriting study, um, that's a good one. So you can just use this for, for practice. But of course, it helps more if you have um, the text itself. Let me move everybody up. So let's see what's in here under writings. They normally have a ton of secondary literature, like, for example, the transcriptions, and translations into French and German, not necessarily English, unfortunately. Let's just see what we have here. Um, text content. Ugh, I picked a bad example. <laughs> okay, if you were to do this for the for the text from today, you basically get um, the text transcribed in uh, well in standard Egyptological transcription, and you would get two translations, one in German and one in French. Um, and you may also have additional articles which uh, give you background on this in PDF form. I think the reason why they make you register for this is because I'm assuming some of these things are copyrighted. But if you have any interest in looking at original objects, um, I'd strongly recommend signing up for the Museo Egizio. It's free. Uh, some of these, they now make you do a uh, Egyptian language test to get in. That's quite funny. They, they show you something in hieroglyphs and you have to transcribe it correctly. I forgot if it's Ramses online or the Museo Egizio or both that make you do that. But it's really simple. They just show you like, like one or two words and you have to type in the right transliteration and then, they, then you're registered. But that's really the only requirement. Uh, kind of cute. And then you have access to a ton of materials. I'm sorry I picked a bad example. If we have enough time at the end, maybe I'll pick something better. But in the interest of not holding everybody up, basically that's where this came from. And maybe I had to just give you an idea of what's in there. So this is what you would see for this text. You would see the text itself and hieroglyphs. You would see the transcription. You would see the German translation. You would see the um, French translation. And maybe also some secondary documents, uh, which may be relevant to the case. Um, so it's really cool stuff. Highly recommend it. Okie doke. With that being said, though, um, let's go into our papyrus and let's start maybe with the date. Who wants to take that one? Take it. Nobody else wants to. It's yours. All right. So, uh, Hesebet. Oops. Can't spell. Yes. Is that with a 
That's with a T. Oh, right? Well, maybe not. There is a T spelled, but who knows? I take that. All right. Um, <laughs> Numbers. So twenty nine. <laughs> okay. You know, well, I'm not even. I'm not that willing to. <laughs> I'm not that confident in the reconstruction, so I tend to stick to just. Fine. I just put it in. Four <laughs> numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, Abed. Mm -hmm. Two. Yep. Okay. Peret. Su. Mm -hmm. Now I think that's a ten, but I'm actually not entirely certain. I've never seen it that way around. Uh, in hieratic, at least of that time, they normally do it where the day is uh, flipped uh, horizontally. It's quite interesting. The other numbers are are standing up, and then the, the days are uh, 90, 90 degrees offset. So if you had 20, it would also be those two tens uh, stacked like 90 degrees rotated, mm -hmm. like that. I see. Okay. I haven't seen the form. Right. So... I guess like this. Medu. Yeah. Perfect. Anyway, I think... Yeah. Uh, so regnal year, regnal year, um, 29, so month two of the season of Peret, which I think is occasionally called winter and occasionally the season of growing. You're right. I'll but just stay with Peret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually safer. Um, tenth day, mm -hmm. or day 10. You got it. Perfect. Now, what they're not telling us is which king, but it Ramses the third. So this is towards the end of his reign. Uh, Ramses the third is supposed to have had thirty-one years. So we're getting to to the end of his comparatively long reign, and that would be around eleven fifty-four, I believe, BC. All right. And for the season, that gets tricky because they still had the wandering year at that time where it shifts every year because they didn't yeah. correct down to to the last point two five days of the year. So as a result, you can't really tie it yet to any particular season unless you happen to know what it was in that year. And I don't. So let's take that. Awesome. Question. Could I ask a, a question? Um, we, we translate that as Hesbet, but I know in... in some other stuff I've seen that as Renpet. Um, right. Which do you use in in uh, late Egyptian? That's a really good question because it's never spelled out, um, or at least I don't think it's it's really spelled out. Um, despite, I, do you want to take? I it? thought it was Chesbet in dates for Rengel year, and Renpet is just the very general word for year. Right. So I mean, nobody disagrees that this by itself. Or maybe with a little ra, a re sign. Uh, this by itself is is rampant, or later in Coptic rompe year. Um, but if you add that that sep sign to it, um, then the opinions diverge. There are at least three different versions, and I forgot what they are. But I know a lot of ink has been spilled on it. Um, Nevo goes with respect. Um, I'll just do the same since that's the course we're using, but uh, it's not universally accepted. There are at least two other versions in the literature of how it could be transcribed for a regnal year. Um, so yeah, I'll Is go with the one that you have. I've got it here with the second H, not the third. Um, H dot. And you're absolutely Did right. I no, no. misread that? You're absolutely right. It's my bad. Should be this. Sure. I'm at least fairly certain. Let's have a quick look. Ooh, ba -dup, ba -dup, ba -dup. Uh, TLA is down today, at least the modern version, for some reason. Happens periodically, mm. where they're super slow. But uh, that's what we have Ramses for. Uh, yes. And I'm also, I thought I'd seen it with a final D. Ha, 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 ha. That doesn't help. Uh, how do you say regnal year in French? Mm. Oh. I don't know. Some kind of. It could be mm. l'année an, du roi. It could be yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, no, it's is a good idea, though. But not something yeah. with année. Um, what would you say in German? Um, 
Regierungsjahr? Regierungsjahr? Okay. <laughs> ah, nee. Yeah, we'd say regnal year. That's It the is. problem. Here we go. There you go. Ah, nee, ah. You, you were spot on. It is an Annie. Mm -hmm. right. So, Just Annie. Annie dans une date, so the, the, the not translating the regnal. Right, thing. right, right. Yeah. Oh, so, well, it's, that's interesting. The point is, for them, it's just natural. Like, we don't say 2021 in, you know, in the year of our Lord anymore. Mm, so right. they're measuring time by their kings, whereas we measure it, we used to measure it by Anno Domino, and now it's common era or whatever it is, that moment right. enters time. That's right, that's right. Domini. I mean, <laughs> they still do the the um, Japanese thing, basically, going by Ragnar yeah. years. Um, cool. So, so Hesbeth is, and you're right, it's with the second age, not with the... Okay. Cool. Well done. Any more questions on the date? If not, I would ask somebody to take the second one. So what happened on that date? I'll have a go at that one, if you like. It sounds good. Let's do it. No, you know, I'll do my best. Um, it's <clears throat> Heru Hun. And Zen, which I think is an infinitive at that point. It is. Mm -hmm. Zen, Ta, Five, Diu, uh, Inbet, Un, Pa, Her, In, Ta. Now, I, I think that's is it. The team, right. the, the gang, Ta, is it. Uh, uh, Jed. Perfect. Spot on. All right. What do you make out of it? What do I make out of it? Um, this day, um, the passing or past, or I, I think the passing of the five uh, walls of the tomb uh, by the the gang. <laughs> to say or saying Does that sound free right perfect that was spot on that's right um yeah any questions or any further commentary on this one I wasn't I wasn't sure what kind of form Erjed was so it's definitely um, an infinitive? Oh, no, I should have asked what you think it is, but I already gave the answer, sorry. <laughs> well, I've got it as infinitive question mark on my homework, so I thought it might be one, but I just was not at all certain. It's true. So after prepositions, you use the infinitive, just like in, okay. in Coptic and in, in English as well. So to say, um, or a bit more idiomatically in English, in order to say. Um, in German, we will put an um. Mm. um and that's very common, oh, actually. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, I think it's an, it's an introduction phrase to a quotation, isn't it? To that's, direct speech. That's exactly what it is. What in Coptic would become J, simply. So blah, 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 J, and then comes whatever you say. That's right. And so, yeah, since you brought it up, E.T., um, so, yeah, one infinitive here. And what they do is in these kind of diary like entries, just put the infinitive. It's not a, a full verb form, but just on this day, Passing of the guard, just like the telegraph style or, or diary style that we may be using in modern languages as well. Um, they're doing that here too. So like Chris said, passing of the five walls of the tomb. Um, we should probably talk at some point a bit about what the tomb is, because that's not immediately or what the five walls are. Um, yeah, let's see. Should we go there now? Does yeah. anybody know what they are? I think the tomb is the well, what we call the Valley of Kings. Just the it's really the tombs, plural mm. of them. And um, I mean the the five walls. You actually specified that it's the five guard posts around that valley because, of course, um, the the valley was guarded because even back then people had the idea of robbing these places. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of places with gold inside. What could go wrong? Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> although uh, it's it's kind of a, 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 um, an obvious place to rob, right? Right, right. Although in truth, um, so I was expecting 
when I came across this word inbu, I thought, oh, that should be easy. Let's just open a map of um, of Daniel Medina and, and the valley, and they should be right there. Nobody really knows what they are, to my understanding. They could be walls. They could be, like you said, guard posts somewhere along the way. Um, but where exactly they are, what they look like, we don't know. I mean, this looks like it is a wall. So I also, in my mind, translate them as, as, uh, as guard posts in the wall or something. But honestly, we don't quite know what they are. Um, I think a wall is, there seems to be some... Um... Uh, oh goodness gracious what's the word um some more examples of the word walls being used a little metaphorically because we also have in mm -hmm. the white walls for uh, either as a word for memphis or for the entire gnome mm -hmm. around it and there's also people don't seem to be very certain what the white walls refer to with anything proposed from the white walls of some temple to it being a way to write about the the desert around there which would look bright and white so um and i had another example which right now i can't think of but oh um was that also inbu i think the wall of the ruler towards sinai is also not actually a wall a wall wall yeah there's something but mm -hmm. uh, like, like also a couple of isolated garpers that as far as we know weren't connected by a wall or anything like that oh, cool. yeah, i think they were just forts to protect the boundary it, weren't they yeah like they were a line of forts that they called a wall although i'm not entirely sure whether that also uses the word ineb i don't know what I do, what is the wall of the ruler called in egyptian uh, hmm. I think it is in Eb. It is? It, okay. Is it? It is, but I can't remember what the word for the ruler is. Heka. Heka? Should be Heka. Yeah, should be Heka. Um, Probably. Let's see if it's, it's in, in Ramses. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Hang on. Let's see if I can move you guys. Here we go. Oh. It's in Sinaway. Um, yeah. Oh. It is. Uh, that's why I'm so annoyed that I don't know it. <laughs> Somewhere. Because <laughs> we're just reading Sinaway on Wednesdays. So here we go. Ineb is wall, and Ineb, uh, Inbet is fortification, guard post. Interesting. At least according to Ramses Online. Mm. Uh, the old version of TLA works. So I'm just. Let's check that. Trying to see if I can find it there. <laughs> ah, in Buheka, indeed. So yeah. the walls of the ruler. Okay, cool. So I guess we have to imagine something warlike, let's put it this way, with some some something along the line to prevent um pro let's say there's probably something built there, but who knows what. What exactly? There must be some kind of guards. I think if I remember like the salt one, two, four papyrus, the one which is the the allegations about one of the four men being a crook, basically. Uh I thought there was some kind of running to the guard posts involved, but I forgot if that is at the at the village itself or again those those five uh, five input. I forgot. I have to look that up. I, I thought a map. I think could it's be also helpful. mentioned in the one. Oh God, which papyrus is that? Where there's full of accusations against. It may actually be the same one. But it's the same. It's, uh... Where where this one guy is accused of a lot of things, but there I think there would the thing I remember was talking about bribing a guard to the valley to be able to steal. Oh, okay. Well, that that's a fun one too, by the but way. But unfortunately, I don't. Have the, <laughs> I, I I know which book I have it in, but the, I don't have that book with me right now. I'm sorry. Maybe a future homework a passage from that. That's quite interesting. Um. All right, just thought I'd show a quick map here. So Nile, City of the Living, of course, then the, the western western side. Um, there, El Medina is here. Um, the valley behind it, and I wish I, I had been there. I haven't, um, one day. But uh, so basically, Valley of the Kings, Valley of the Queens behind there, El Medina. All the temples, the mortuary temples, closer to, to the Nile. So uh, to Moses the third. Here's where Amenophis the third would have been, Abedin al-Khabu, so Ramses three, um, 
yeah, just to give like a, an overall layout, um, layout of the land here, so to say. So where exactly were those posts? You would assume they would have to be somewhere between the city, the valley, or is it is it between the is it between the village and the valley, or is it beyond the the village? That is something I don't know how that really looks. Um, um, would love to know. I don't. This famous this famous famous Hebrew scholar named John Romer. Romer is it Romer or Romer? Romer. Romer? I, I think so. Romer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 One of his one of his series. He he described it as though there were these access points at certain points in the wadi where mm -hmm. they would sit. They had advantage. They could see no. these large, I guess, sloughs of land, and then they kind of know what's the best point to come into the the tomb areas at. So they would just kind of sit there and watch. That's mm. kind of the way he described it. And then he also said they were sitting in these places where the sound of you coming in kind of like would all converge on like certain areas in the wadi. Mm. And then they'd know, okay, it's someone over there. It's not one of mine. And so you gotta be thieves. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in one of his episodes. Um one of the or one of it, the earlier ones. Um I forgot the name of it. But yeah, that it's it's I'm, I heard it in there though once he, the way he described it. Cool. So one thing you find is in, in these strike papyri, it's always starting with this, namely that that the crew is making it across those those guard posts that you just described, or those yeah, whatever they really are, and there are five of them. So they're going outside of the area. Another term that is not that easily grasped is what is paher. There again, it's like entire literature on it. Um, is it the necropolis, like basically everything beyond the village? Is it the particular tomb of a um, of a pharaoh or a queen? Nobody debates that her by itself means a tomb, but when you have it like pacher, is it a particular tomb, a tomb, or is it basically the area of the tombs? I gravitate towards the latter. It just makes more sense, especially when we get to the end of the text. But just want to say that's not completely settled either. Um, what exactly is meant by this? How far did the Pacher go, basically, in, in the photo we just looked at? Different opinions. Very cool. So well done. Uh, on the sentence, in is what gives you the subject for the for the infinitive. Um, yeah, the arger doesn't need a subject. So that's more like a quotation mark, opening the quotation marks. Cool. Want to take somebody want to take the next one? I can take it. All right. Uh, two N Hacker N. Mm -hmm. Iu Haru uh, Meju Hamut, I think. That is right. And I forgot if it's Med or Meju. I would go, I think either is fine. No. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Ak mm -hmm. uh, Empire Abed. That's right. So we are hungry. And this is a stative. It's got all its endings and everything. Nice and clear. Cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um 18 days mm -hmm. um have entered into the month. So 18 days have passed in the month. Perfect. Should make it more colloquial English. That's right. Awesome. Um, any other commentary on this one? Like grammatically, for example. So this one is stative, like you said. Stative. I guess the magic question is, what is this one? Aku. Um, and it could be one of two things. It could be an infinitive. So it could be, you heru medu hamenu her aku. Um, is entering, or it could be the state of um, has entered, which like earlier may have had a um, may have had an, an ending there, but by now might as well be a zero zero ending. So honest answers, I don't know. I would gravitate towards the state of just because 
uh, what you're trying to say is it has already happened. It has already passed. So it would make sense to me for this to be like a subject state of construction. But the thing is, from the spelling, you just can't tell. Um, as soon as the khur keeps falling out, um, you often really can't quite tell. Is it a is it a stative or is it a an infinitive? And in Coptic, the constructions become equivalent just to the point that uh, the vowels are different. Um, and of course, in Coptic, you can see that. And uh, here you can't. So uh, if anybody has a strong opinion on it, would love to hear it. Um, I'm like undecided gravitating towards stative. If not, then I would say let's move to the next one. Well done. I guess as a comment, there's this previous stative in the same sentence. So maybe there's, you know, hecker, hecker, and, and then ack, match one another, if they're both stative. It could be, although you also see it like an earlier text where you have, or no, even in late Egyptian text where you have, for example, uh, the simple past sejum and F, eh, sejum F, not sejum and F, sorry. Uh, you don't see that much. The past sejum F, and the stative in the same sentence, like one part has one, one has the other. So it's it, it's logical. I mean, it, it makes sense, um, but it's not necessarily the case. Uh, they, they like to switch tenses around as well, depending on the verb. But no, you're right. I mean, if this here is a, is, we are hungry, we're in the state of being hungry, and this has already happened, stative just makes more sense to me logically. I think that also happens with status and infinitives too. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, they occur. They occur a lot of times in the same, same sentence. Interesting. Same okay. line. Could very well be. I don't have an example in my head, but I wouldn't be surprised. Want to take the next one? Sure. All right. It's yours. So we have you, sin. Mm hmm MS um Behuti or Be Be Behuti. It's actually just Pehui. Be oh I'm sorry, no T, thank you. Behui. Mm -hmm. No worries. Um Ni Ta Sut. Uh Hut. Or, or set, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Or Hut. Why did I say it? <laughs> set. I'm thinking about the throne. Thank you. I think it's. I think I know what it is. I mean, it just looks almost the same, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I, I looked at it, and it's definitely a house. I, see a, I saw a seat. <laughs> no, 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 it does almost look like a... Like the topolo topological shape is almost the same. <laughs> okay. I would have got whacked with the, the cane from the chief scribe for making it. Min <laughs> mm -hmm. Um that's right. Oops, not in Egyptian. Let's do it in transliteration. Men, pepper. All right. Um, and who is this? Oh, I'll let you translate it first. And and they sat um, behind, oh, but at the rear. Mm -hmm. Oh, at the rear is good. Yeah, I like it. Because that's exactly what they say in Egyptian. Literally at the behind. <laughs> yeah, at the rear. Of the, uh, the, te the temple or the, not the house, but yeah, the temple of Minchapura. That's right. And that, anybody want to, or do you know, anybody want to fill in which, which uh, pharaoh we're talking about? In all likelihood. That most is third. That is correct. Um, there is, there are other Menchepares, but they are more like 26th dynasty or something. So none of the, that has happened yet. So it can only be <laughs> that most the third. All right, perfect. So let's take a look at how far they went. Google is very helpful there, so essentially <laughs> that's more or less the way they may have taken. Uh, although they may have come from inside the, the necropolis, not necessarily from the from the town, but so they're making their way down uh, to the river valley. Um, 
and sit down in the in the mortuary temple of Tatmos the third. Um, grammatical question: What do you make out of out of the chemis or chemsi? Well, they said, um, is it is it a sub subject stative? Because this is the one where the verb doesn't have the um, the ending, the suffix ending on them. So it could be either, right? It could be they were in a state of sitting down, or it could be it could be a her here. They were they they were upon sitting down. I tend towards the letter to assume it's just an infinitive because that fits the the narration. Like they said this. And then they sit down the way you had it in English. They sat down at the rear of the, the mm. temple. So it's more like an ongoing action. So I assume that's an infinitive here. Yes. So yeah, well done. Um, spot on. We're making good progress. Any questions about this one? If not, then let's go. Who wants the next one? I'm going to let this I, I haven't done the preparation, but if I'm allowed to guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Actually, it's the one below I thought we were doing. This is going to be even harder. Um, e. I'm not sure what the feet mean for the reed leaf. Um, the feet on the reed leaf. So that is for the the verb e in general, um, which I'll just transcribe like this. Um, e. So that's right. So that means to um, come. It's the same as in Coptic. Uh, in Coptic, yeah. it would be this. Simple as that. Oh, okay. So same thing. Mm -hmm. Um. So e in mm -hmm. pa. Complicated thing, which I don't know. Okay, hang on. There's one thing missing, though, the part in blue. Did you have that one? Oh, uh, in. Right, in. Mm -hmm. Oops. Interesting. Not Jin Yan. Uh, go away. Sorry. Keyboard disease. Too many in. keyboard disease. In. in. Okay. Like you M. Said, pa. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what that is. Um, that's a scribe's palette. Um, and here it has a little person behind it, so it refers to the person who does the scribing, uh, who does the writing, so it's a scribe. Um, written, the, how about written? Um, actually, it's the scribe itself. Um, oh. In the scribe. Yeah, and that the, would be the how. The, the how um, of n, n. Correct. Pa through first um, letter is correct what's the what's the little mouth at the bottom is it ra that's right in paher in paher is the tomb uh, yeah in the tomb pa i n b <laughs> that's right pa inep you have it uh, that was the same inep as up here and if you're surprised you didn't see that in the homework is because I forgot it that's why I put it in parentheses it's in the original papyrus and I just deleted it in copying my bad and I'm also not quite sure what to make out of it but we can talk about it in a moment um, yeah. if, okay are we going to stop there or not that's fine mm -hmm. so what do you make out of that right so um Come could be a come in the scribe. Mm -hmm. I give you a little hint. Oh. This, this here is by. This is uh, like the same as the preposition by in in English. Oh, come by the tomb. Sorry, the the scribe. Mm -hmm. Come by the scribe. That doesn't make anything. The scribe. Uh, so that's what happened. That's right. It's the of the, of the tomb. Mm -hmm. The inib. Oh, coming by the scribe of the tomb. Right. <laughs> Which I keep, keep going. Uh, where are we now? I'm going to add the 
I'm going to add the uh, pie in it. I'm not completely sure what it means in this case. Like the some of the translations sound like, like there's the fortified one or something, um, namely the tomb. I'm a bit hazy on this myself, so let's just skip that part. Yeah. Any idea what this is? Um, per mm, now, I can't remember what the um thing above is the above the object. So, per, mm -hmm. per, this per, is ah, uh, and uh, mm, yeah, that's right. And ESET, you got it. Um, and then there's a little two. Text, that's right. Uh, to um snow that's right snowy um, mm. um, so, uh, it's not donkey is it uh, the <laughs> you're very close actually because donkey is spelled with the same sign but this year is also in the word pharaoh the second part of per ah the the great house uh, uh, pharaoh the pharaoh of not quite, not quite. The second part of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is hang on, let me spell that out for you. Um uh, uh, oops. Let me make it simple. Um uh, so the great house. So per is the house and R then must be Oh. The adjectives come after the the noun that they refer to. Ah. Oh. I hope I have this right. Et don't cuss me out. I hope I got my my grammar right. <laughs> is it? Is that right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, good. I don't know why you're translating to French, but that's absolutely correct. For, for <laughs> no, simple, I like that. For a simple like reason. That. For a simple reason, because the adjective comes after the noun in French. Uh, <laughs> it's the same in Egyptian. But ah, uh, so ah is is great. It's big. So <laughs> so the per <laughs> the pa ah in iset uh, snowy. Um, so what is the ah in iset? Probably. Well, I, I am actually confused now. Was okay. the, the great house had nothing to do with this? It does. So, ah uh, is great in, in English. Oh, the great, right. The great of, then this seems to come in a scribe. <laughs> that looks like a book rule. Uh, true, although he said is actually a crew, or the way that Chris had it, the, the gang is also okay. It's, it's a crew of workers, basically, in this case. It could also be a crew or a team in the military, I think. It's basically a group of people, not a whole whole host, but more like a like a squadron or uh, yeah. a smaller unit. Great group, crew. Sunui. Why well, have we got Sunui? Oh, two, two. That's right. Yeah. The second great crew, the second large crew. Group of people. Almost. Gang. Let, almost. Let me break it apart for you. So ESET is the crew. The R, R and ESET would be the grade of the crew, which is, geez, did I did I gloss that? Probably not. Oh, you uh, mean the leader of the crew? You got it. Exactly. The ringleader. <laughs> yep. It's the it's basically the leader of the workers. And it has an article. So it's basically the, hang on, how do I want to translate Format. that? Let me, yeah, something like that. Foreman actually makes sense to me. Union leader. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'll go with the foreman. Uh, the foreman of the crew. Now, however, it's not the foreman of the crew, but it is snowy. So Second. it's probably... Mm, the deputy. The two foreman. The two foreman. You got it. Oh. Uh, she could be the deputy foreman or not. Could it be the second? That would have to be mechs now. Uh, they write that differently. They write mechs now. Um, that would be the second one. Oh. They have like a, when we say like the third, the fourth, the fifth, etc. the mech fills the same form as the, the same need as the, 
uh, the th and fourth, uh, fifth, etc. It's like the ordinal, ordinal suffix. Old Egyptian has a nu there, um, which is not being used anymore, apart from in some some residual titles. So yeah, it's the two foremen of the crew. Um, I have a question about this one. I thought you would. I think you saw that in my, <laughs> so, in my homework. I put a par parenthetical here. How do we know it's not the foreman of the two crews? The honest answer is I don't. I think it could be either. I think it could be either. Because uh, they... I, 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 may, a, I read actually a, something right. about this. Yeah, okay. No, um, I've, I've read while uh, looking for a little bit of info about this that the workers in Dera Medina were organized into two main work crews that each of them had a foreman. So in a way, it's both. It's both the foreman of the two crews and the two foremen of the crew as a whole. Yeah. So it, it's kind of both, and it's just annoying that grammatically it's actually neither, because there is a... Yeah, I, 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 neither of them is, is an explicit plural. Yeah, reinforcing that, I read something that says the craftsmen and workmen were divided into two sections, which were called the right side and the left side. And each section had a foreman who was called an ah and is it. So that's what it is. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had two themes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what and it he is. He was supported by a scribe. So basically, um, there's a starboard watch and a larboard watch. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's interesting. So one is the read, uh, if I could now remember, uh, read is side. One is the, the, the side of the right and one is the side of the left. I'm not sure if that has got something to do with how they were living in the, in the, the town, if it has something to do with who's working on what part of the tomb. No idea. But yeah, they had, definitely had two teams. Maybe and... it's just a way to give them names because uh, right. humans generally tend to prefer to give stuff names than to number it. So Good point. Generally, something like right and left team will probably right. be considered preferable to first and second. I mean, that's pretty much why where my example comes from, that example of the Royal Navy using starboard watch and larboard watch. So has absolutely nothing to do with, oh. or the, originally it has nothing to do with anything. Then they actually used to implement it a bit. But originally, just, just to not call them first and second watch, because on top of things, that means something else. Oh, that is that could not, be misunderstood no for the first and second watch of the day. Mm. So that's pretty much where that it's just to give them a name and something that is very obviously has two options. So it, it could be as simple as that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, but, mm -hmm. Go ahead. but to go back to this grammatically, if they wanted to explicitly say the two foremen, couldn't they have said na, a, a, senui? And Isat, then it would be crystal clear that they meant the two foremen of the crew. Because it's an indirect genitive, we can put the two before the the genitival adjective. Uh, right? Yeah, I, think, uh, I think you could. I have the same the feeling. The thing is, just below, we have this again. We have pa, what was that pronounced? Uh, um, achu. Achu. Yeah, yeah, pa achu snawi. Exactly the same thing again. So that's yeah, why I had. I know it's it's not explicit anymore with the pa being only for singular. So that's the Isn't thing. It, but you could do, still you so could still can, have advanced the senu to be immediately behind the noun. A it question not. though, we have the case that Egyptian lost the dual. Do we know for sure that was lost towards the plural, or could that be like in so many languages that was lost for a singular? Well, that's the thing. So all numbers in Lady Egyptian are constructed with a singular article. So it's those two. Oh, it's all numbers. Of, even. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, if you had if you had three, it would also be uh, I'll say it just in Coptic, like like pashomt, uh, pashomt a. Uh, like the the three great ones, basically. Um, yeah. It's always like the three off and not the three off, like plural kind of. I, I can't do it in English, but you know what I mean. <laughs> There's no distinction there between singular and plural. I use the singular. So to to um, Aaron's point, indeed, pa a snui and isat makes sense to me. Why not? Um, or, or perhaps perhaps the two refers to two crews. Rather than foreman. Well, 
that that was my point. That's why I, I had yeah. translated it both ways in my homework because I don't think there's any way to know exactly for sure which one it means. Yeah. I think the whole point is that it could be either, but if, as Chris said, the title of these foreman was actually A and E set, we should probably consider this one word. So it isn't, it's it's a right. bit like when you, you yeah. Um, it's it's its own title. It's right. it's so it's not an yeah. It's, it's, it's like if it's you have title. man like the yeah. I, I'm sorry I keep no, I, to this. I if you have the English word man of war, the plural is men of war and not man of war. Yeah. You can't pluralize yeah. the wars even if that ship has fought in several right. of them. Yeah, because at this point it's a it's a connected title. Yeah, so if it. it's a title, it's a title. It's not an indirect genitive. Yeah, it could. It could. I mean, the title is an indirect genitive, but it, well, it could yeah, be that. But it's not going not, by what it's not that out. anymore. It's it's like a compound. Yeah, potentially. Potentially. Cool. No, great stuff. Um, so I put both now. I put the foreman of the two crews or the two crew foreman. I mean, it's it's uh, more or less the same thing, but grammatically, it's definitely an interesting question. Like, how would that be perceived and how would it be con constructed, right? So, yeah, Rebecca, well done. Um, so basically, it's another infinitive uh, to your question of what does it mean coming by the scribe? Because this is kind of like telegraph or a telegram or, or diary style. He puts the infinitive in front, the coming or simply coming, uh, coming by, coming by the scribe of the tomb, which basically means then came the scribe of the tomb, which is like the highest official in the whole affair. It's like the senior scribe, so to say. Um, and the two foremen, and then a bunch of other guys. Um, they're all coming to the workers. Interesting that the foremen apparently are not with the workers, at least in this case. They seem to suddenly find their crews have, have made... Uh, uh, have made out of the out of the the workplace or someplace else, so they're coming after them, um, and they're not coming by themselves. They're bringing a bunch of other guys as well. Uh, maybe let me look at the clock. Well, maybe we can get this far today. Um, so it, it rather it rather looks as if the whole of the management team turned up. That's exactly yeah, what it is. It's all of upper management. <laughs> it's basically upper management at this point in time. Exactly. Exactly. There's um, a further section. Of course, it doesn't end with this first strike. It goes on. There's a whole series of them. And one of the later ones says, then they went to look for the workers, basically. <laughs> so you really have to imagine that, that the, the workers by now, they're sitting in the museum or someplace. Um, and the, the upper management is basically going down into the valley to find them. And it's kind of humorous in my, in my mind. Where are they? <laughs> Where is everybody? Well, there you go. So let's see who else belongs to. Uh, any more questions about this one by Rebecca? No? Okay, cool. Then I would say, who wants to take the next one? And maybe we combine that into one. Um, let's make this one sentence. Who wants it? You can take it if nobody else wants it. Okay. But, all right. So, um, pa iden. Mm -hmm. oh, I sorry. guess that u might actually be there because it's, it's, it's in a way written twice. It is written but twice. So let's let's take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Pa Achu. Right. Who knows about that? U two. Right. Snowy. Hey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that R was actually also a pretty Coptic influence. Um Ash. And Sen. R. Jed. Hmm? Um, I, um, I think the Aleph is not pronounced. It's just uh, another way. How, the Ayn is not pronounced. Ayin. It's just a, another way how to write M. Okay. Wasn't sure. R. Mm -hmm. You got it. Perfect. So oh. first of all, we have um, the other guy, the, the rest of management, which includes a depu the deputy. Mm -hmm. The two officers, I'm just going by the words you gave us. Yeah, because I don't think exactly anybody really are. knows uh, the two Achu. I've seen in the German translation, they translated them as die beiden Ordnungskräfte. So what do you make out of that in English? The two 
forces of order. Yeah, which, security police. Well, got, it would be members of the forces of order. Because yeah. we don't... It's, it's kind of clunky. Uh, officers of the law, we'd say in English. Something like that. But were they that high up? I mean, note that they come at the very end. They come after the scribe, the crew foreman, the deputies. So now what are they? Are they like... Uh, is the, are they security basically? Is that like when you when you're in Answers. court, and you have those guys that stand on the back and make sure that nobody basically <laughs> flips out at a judge? Is that what it is? I mean, the, the 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 determinative might make you think that. Good point. The stick. Could be. Yeah, so let's go security with, guards. Could be the guards. Could it? Is it exactly? Now I imagine a mall cop. I don't know. I'm still your time. <laughs> I mean, that's, of course, the kind of thing that is really difficult to guess about in old civilization. But don't all leaders have the cane, so that can be the pharaoh, or they could be any upper management. Yeah. It's a, it's a strange spelling, isn't it? Well, most profession, I mean, a lot of profession, I think even guard, the gardener has a... Has a stick, yeah. yeah. yeah it can it stand for work. manual work, it's a, particularly yeah. in hieratic, when a lot of the manual labor hieroglyphs... Uh, that they're, they're, they're the same or very similar in hieratic, I think. So, Gabriela is asking from the Sumerian side if there will ever be a course of early Egyptian, because I just told him that late Egyptians are going to be late again for the Sumerians. <laughs> 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 well, okay, let's just go. We didn't really talk about, I mean, early year Egyptian, of course, uh, yeah, we. But we have that, but there isn't really one stage of the language we call early Egyptian, is there? So I think he's just out of luck. We're going to be late forever. What can I do? Yeah. <laughs> All right. But so, yeah, um, so I, I go with you, Ash. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so Ash is summoned. Uh, so the summoning, again, I would say this is, I think this is a state of, actually. Um, oh. oh, interesting. An unmarked state of having summoned, shouted at question mark. Yeah. And send so off them to them at them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Summoning them. Something like that. Ar Arjed again saying or to say in order to say the introduction of the direct speech that's right um how do i get this all onto one line apologies um ba, 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 ba. need to get some space here yeah okay and then um, what are they saying the last um stuff? oh yes uh we uh, come inside so that's right my main man, min, we said, um, as you mean. said, uh, imperative to e mm -hmm. or iwi, and Erhin was inside. That's right. Uh, of the to the inside, should add, yeah, the hin on its own means inner part, the, the inside, and er is the movement towards the inside. Absolutely. And so this is a really okay. interesting one. Is the n part of me the, the, after the colon the me I know is an imperative of come what's the n and below the two legs that's a really interesting question because me is only an imperative like you guys said so it's not an inflected verb normally so it doesn't it wouldn't be like may we come or something like that um, because that's a wrong verb that would be uh, in basically, or Iyutin, or something of that nature. Um, so this must be something else. And I've seen some, like, for example, the German translation on the Museum of uh, Turin uh, site, they just basically delete the N. They essentially say it's superfluous. It shouldn't be there. But the problem is it shows up in some other late Egyptian text as well. I did a search in, uh, in Ramses Online, and it's in a whole bunch of magical spells, like come out, like speaking to, to some kind of disease or evil spirit or whatnot. And it uses the N as well. So the, the, this is real. This is not just one mistake by one scribe who's getting a bit too excited because of the whole strike action. So one thing I've Isn't noticed... is the object of the state of? I'm going to say the object of the imperative. Um, 
not a bad idea either because the imperative can have like um like a second person so then you would say is it like me 10 are you missing a a t basically right that's another good good hypothesis where you could say it should really be something like this me chen or in more modern right. spelling me 10 come out you basically not a bad idea either it could be that although i would like to offer another theory if you look under the imperative for um, for to come in Coptic, there is a form amoine. So there's ame, there's amu, and there's a plural form amoine, and there's a plural form amete. There's like a whole bunch of different forms that you can find in Coptic. And this is just too attractive for me. I suspect that this is what it is. That it's basically, this whole thing at the end is really amoine ichun. You could say that in Coptic, I think, without making too much of a much of a mistake, and that's exactly it. Amoine e hun, come inside, like come back inside. Um, that's my hypothesis, although uh, to your point, Chris, I can't rule this out either, that this should be some kind of, um, it could also be an object pronoun, and I could be on the wrong path here. Not clear. Could but it also be something like a first person plural imperative, like let's go, let's come inside, let's go inside? I Think, I sort of suspect, I mean, imperatives normally are not conjugated, though. That's the problem. That's Yeah, that's true. I'm just thinking, well, this is very modern Hebrew, where you can form this sort of imperative with the first plural future. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that's like maybe... German last scale. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a lot of languages, you form that imperative, really, with a first person plural of the of the word like say French mon, uh, allons mm -hmm. let's go um oh. not Spanish it works in all the Romance languages for example but, so, but it's an order it's an imperative rather than a let's go well that's the problem with English there's not really a good way of of really expressing a pure imperative for the first person plural. So um, like something like the the French allons, you're going to have to translate with let's go in English, but in French, this is an imperative. So I'm just, I'm just there's just not a good English translation here. I mean, to your point, this exists. In Coptic, you can just say maron. And um, the mare normally is like mare, mare shope, may, may he or it happen, um, is normally the, the form when you wish for something. But if you just put the first plural at the end, it basically means like, let's go, like in Spanish, vamos. Like, mm. um, yes. Whereas if you say um, go or come, mm. group of people come in is totally different from let's go in. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you can't make that imperative that such no. a clear imperative in the first person plural in English. That just can. is no better form than let's than the let's. I, but you wouldn't say that if I was saying come in is an order to a group of people, a group of servants coming to my house. I'd say come in. That's an order. I'd never say. And if I was a servant, I'd never say let's go in. That's yeah. Now, now imagine that group of servants has just put down all their tools and are on strike, <laughs> and you're trying to include yourself. Say let's go in and have a talk. Like I'm yeah, including myself in the order. <laughs> yeah. That would be persuasive. <laughs> let's go means actually we're going, but it, you know we all agree. But come in or go is an order. So I think we do have it in English. Anyway, completely irrelevant. Sorry. But no again, worries. come in is to a group of people that doesn't include you. So that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. It's just hard to translate. Come. It's tricky. Turn of voice. Yeah. I would say let's break here for today. Um, we have a few more lines to go. Can I, can I ask, yeah, a, very, super late can I ask a very quick question? I'm so sorry. Um, about the ash in this sentence. Ah. That not be an infinitive? <laughs> I like the... up, upon saying, like imagine a her there. The boss, the boss, the boss are saying to them, or so, cried, call out to them. It could I, easily be, and I think you don't need the the her, do you? No, I'm, I know, but I'm saying, imagine that it is there. Then you know, uh, no, you just as they yourself. so often do, they leave it out. You know, and this would this be an instance of that. I guess and probably it, wrongly. I saw it as a sedimentous. <laughs> no, it's a. Here's the thing. I shouldn't send. They shouted. 
I'm having a bit of a, I don't even know, honestly, if Osh can take a state of, there are some verbs that just don't because you're, you, uh, there's a list somewhere, I think in Czerny, um, maybe even, I'm not sure if, if Mirbeau has it, he may have it, of some Never verbs that, had it too. then let's take a quick look. Um, I sort of suspect it's an infinitive as well. Um, there was a third interpretation, I saw it in somebody's homework, could that be a said German F? Um, they said, they shouted. Um, it could be, but not at this stage of the language. I think that would be extremely archaic for, for something in the 20th dynasty. So yeah, probably. It's, it's, right. it's probably stative or infinitive, and I strongly lean towards the infinitive. But can we, can we, um, can we get a second opinion on that? Where's <laughs> Mr. Never? And if one of you has it, then let's just go with that. Otherwise, I'll I try to find him. I don't have him open, but let's see who's faster. Uh, I lose. I know that already. <laughs> Too many folders to go through. Um, oh, don't, don't think mine looks any less. That's better, wrong. huh? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm sure we all have a ton of these. Right, okay. I've got him. Pseudo participle. Oh, come on, don't be. Yeah, some webs are not attested. Yeah. Uh, but Ash is not in the list. Sure. But however, it does include a lot of verbs of communication. Okay, you've got it too now. Yeah. yeah, like to say or to speak, which makes kind of sense. I mean, you cannot have, you cannot be in the state of, Spoking. I don't know how to say this in English. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't know if you can if you continually <laughs> talking without a break. Right, 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 right. I mean, so so yeah, I I suspect infinitive just because of that. Um, that it's one of those verbs that that don't lend themselves easily to to state of usage. Um, but ultimately, the, the Chris's suggestion of said GMF, I thought that was. With um, an, and the that's kind of the wrong order, right? With the just with an explicit subject. Yeah, no, that couldn't be. It could only be a sejum nf, like in yeah, Middle okay, Egyptian, okay. ashen sen, instead of uh, ashna sen. Um, say to them. I mean, grammatically, it would be would be perfectly fine, right? Um, it's just it seems to me like the wrong period to use that. I don't think he uses a sedium and F anywhere in the, the rest of the papyrus, but that's really where when knowledge of like what's the rest of the document like and what was the speech norm at the time comes in. Uh, a few hundred years before that would have been perfectly fine as an interpretation, I think. I think. Okay, look, guys, let's break here. I thought it was a great session. I hope everybody had as much fun as I did. Nice. Um, and let's wrap this up next time. Uh, we have a few more sentences here and we have our statives. Which everybody got right though, so uh, I think we'll be quick. Maybe I'll just finally else. say in, in, in your map there, your photographic map, it yeah. does show the Hilton. I was interested in that the Hilton that's <laughs> <laughs> the Hilton Luxor. It's been there for a while, yes. <laughs> that's where we can all go. <laughs> I mean, Christian wanted to do that tour, right? That was the, the goal that once COVID was over. There would be like that Egyptian study tour, but the main problem with that is you really need somebody who knows the place. Um, Christian lived there for a while, so he knows the place and he knows what to do or what not to do. I'm clueless. Otherwise, I would say let's just all go. I'd love that. It, it, because, it's like yeah. um, like Jesus came back. He hasn't come back. What are we right. going to do now? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, he's hiding in this mountain somewhere for <laughs> one day to <laughs> return. The German man. <laughs> That's right. But no, I mean, that would be so cool. The idea was go to a few of those places, study the texts first, and then when you're there, see them in situ. Like you could go to, I don't know, the the the, um, the temple of Ramesses III and look at the text essentially documenting the, the invasion of the Sea Peoples. That would be so cool if you say, hey, we went through that first, and now you see it on the wall and you can actually trace it live and in color. Ooh, I mean, that would be fun, but oh well. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that would be great. But I mean, it, there's got to be somebody else in this group who knows a thing or who's been to Egypt, right? I've I've been there. All right. 
Yeah, I, I, I stayed in Luxor just a couple of, of about three or four nights, went across the river on a boat, picked up a donkey <laughs> and uh, in a group. And the donkey took us up to overlooking the Valley of the Kings. Mm. Um, and then we went down and explored a bit. Nice. It was a very touristy trip, but uh, it was interesting. Uh, how comfortable or uncomfortable are donkeys? Now I have to ask. I heard camels are horrible. Well, <laughs> I think I was quite uncomfortable on it, and the donkey was quite <laughs> uncomfortable with me after a while. Basically, <laughs> if you're not used to riding anything as uncomfortable, I've True. been on donkeys, mules, yeah. and horses, and if you spend a tour on them and you're not regularly riding, your bum's going to hurt. No matter <laughs> what. Also, you don't get don seasick on a donkey. Can... The donkeys had a maximum gradient they would go up. <laughs> so as we got near the valley, that we went up to the left, as you look at it on here. And as the gradient reached a certain point, the donkey just stopped, said, I, you know, this is as far as I go. I walk through. I just don't know. <laughs> Interesting. I've been on elephants. Oh, Ooh. me too. Okay. No. But that's for another time. That's for another time <laughs> when we all end up. I haven't been on an actual camel, but I've been on a camel simulator, and yeah, you you, you can apparently get yeah they had somewhere at a museum where I was they had uh, they couldn't bring a camel to walk you around the museum with them. they had a piece of machinery where you could sit on a seat like you would on a camel and then they'd flip a switch and it would move the way a camel does and you you go it really is. Uh, it really is a bit like being on a ship. It's yeah. this kind of you're being moved all the time forward and to the side a bit. Yeah, the re the real difficulty with the area is the Egyptians <laughs> never stop selling you things, mm. not ever. And at the top of the uh, the sort of mountainous bit above the Valley of Kings, the Kings, there were three boys trying to sell us postcards. Sell you what? Sort of postcards. Post Postcards. Well, thank you for all that. Well, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, just leave you. So must I. I'm going to be thank thinking about camel much. simulators the rest of the day. Um, yeah. I know. Uh, so weird. E.T., I think you were being tested out for the special forces. <laughs> oh, sorry, what? Yeah, they were trying to find out whether you could be a candidate for the special forces. Right, right, right. right, right. As a... That's what it sounds like now. I mean, hmm. physicist, camel simulator. I yeah, was a kid in a museum, goodness gracious. <laughs> I, I, think you need to... I was 10 years old or something like that. I, I think you need to be careful, E.T., because they are staking you out. They need people with linguistic skills. Who are okay. Oh, yeah, my super useful linguistic skills of Middle Egyptian and Klingon. Well, <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> There is that whole time machine thing, right? <laughs> Guys, I have to head over to the Sumerians. Yes. Okay. See you all next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.